Hi, I'm Mike Ortiz. I'm the founder and CEO of Jojo Tea. Thank you for coming to sipjojo.com to check out our jasmine tea. Um, I'm excited to tell you a little bit about jasmine tea while our teas are brewing. We have two major uh, different kinds of jasmine tea. We have the jasmine pearl, which as you can see is hand rolled into these pearl shapes. This one is, it, it's made out of the strand of the tea bush that's used to make white tea. So that one has much bigger buds and um, much kind of creamier, softer flavor. Whereas this one, our uh, other loose leaf jasmine tea, is called Jasmine Cloud. And this is a uh, Western Chinese green tea from Sichuan Mountain called Mengding, uh, Sichuan Province, I'm sorry, Mengding Mountain. And this is kind of like, you can think of it like the Jasmine Pearl is for the tea drinker that loves jasmine. And the Jasmine Cloud is for the tea drinker that loves green tea. Like, Green tea from Western China and from Mengding Mountain kind of has more vegetal qualities. It tastes like ricey and spinach and like buttered uh, kale. Uh, whereas Jasmine Pearl has a much softer kind of like honeydew melon and soft uh, floral notes, more butter notes. Um, so you can think of it like kind of more aggressive green tea flavor on the Jasmine Cloud and a much softer and rounder flavor out of the Jasmine Pearl. Another really important difference between these two teas is that we only offer Jasmine Cloud in loose leaf form and Jasmine Pearls are our most popular sachets. So now I want to talk a little bit to you guys about what is Jasmine tea in the first place. You know, typically when you hear about a Jasmine tea, it's usually a green tea because green tea is the most subtle in its flavor. You know, black teas are plucked and then they're rolled and that, that bruises the leaves and it bursts the veins. It allows all the oil and sugar in the vein to bleed out into the leaf and the leaf starts oxidizing and getting dark and sticky. Then the leaf is roasted and that caramelizes all those sugars and that's why you get that kind of like big malty flavor. Whereas with green tea, the, tea, the leaves are just plucked, they're really quickly cooked uh, in, in both of these cases, they're both pan fired. So think, imagine like a big hot frying pan. They take all the fresh tea leaves, throw it on there and really quickly pan fire it. Then they take it off. After that, the leaves are, are shaped. So Jasmine Cloud, since you can see that the leaves are kind of long and thin, these leaves were rolled like this, right? Rolled and twisted. I should say twisted is a better way to explain. Whereas these were rolled, right? The jasmine pearls were individually rolled into this pearl shape. Now, both of these teas were plucked in March because, excuse me, all winter, all, uh, all winter the tea bush is dormant and it doesn't send out fresh buds. But then in March, when spring hits, the tea bush all of a sudden starts releasing like hundreds of fresh buds, right? And every time that you pluck buds, new buds come out after just a couple days. So the more you pluck, the more the tea bush kind of wants you to pluck, right? Now, um, once the leaves are plucked and they're, um, and they're pan fired, because this happens in March, they need to be stored and uh, sealed until July. Because in July is when the jasmine flowers reach their peak aroma at midnight, specifically in July. So when that happens, the fresh jasmine is plucked in eastern China, in the Fujian province, and it's blended with the tea that was harvested in March. And it's allowed to sit together for 24 hours, and then after 24 hours, all of the flowers are removed and fresh flowers are added. And this process is repeated for three nights in a row. So at the end, you get a really thoroughly infused tea. Uh, another really important difference between our green tea and the green tea on the market, most green tea on the market, is that because of the fact that ours was infused in this traditional way, it can be brewed many more times. When you brew the tea, uh, you know, if you brew it a first time, you'll get a lot of jasmine flavor and so forth. But then if you brew it a second time, you'll still get a big boost of that jasmine aroma on your breath. Whereas most commercial teas, when you brew them the first time, you rinse off all of the flavoring and the perfumes and the aromatics because it's all added. And then the next brew is just going to be horrible and almost undrinkable. So I had these teas brewing. Let's take a look at what they look like. This is the Jasmine Pearl. You can see a kind of soft golden color. And you can see how much each of those pearls opens up after it's been infused. 
Each of them is the bud and the first two leaves. There we can see a bud. Here. Let's see, we can open it up. Always explore your, your wet leaf, you know, because your wet tea leaf is always gonna show, is, is gonna show you much more about that tea than the dry leaf ever can, right? So it was plucked right here. Here we have a small bud set right there. You can see that tiny, cute little bud right there. And then here we have another small bud popping out right there. And first leaf, second leaf, bud at the tip. So it looks like this is two uh, bud sets that were plucked and rolled together but for the big one you can see that's the bud, that's the first leaf, and that's the second leaf. And that obviously you can tell it's a leaf. You can see that it comes directly from a bush. Um, like I said the wet leaf is always going to tell you a lot about the size of the the size of the um, of the plucking and how uniform the plucking is, that kind of discipline of the pluckers is gonna tell you so much about the value of the tea that you just got. Then here we see the jasmine pearl, which is actually just um, unrolled, uh, just tightly twisted leaves. And then for the purposes of a quick tasting and a quick comparison, this one again is usually a little bit more, yeah, like vibrant, you know, there's like a, a lot of green notes, a lot of kind of grassiness to it. Think like a spinach and like mountain grass and a little bit of white rice, a little bit of butter. Whereas the Jasmine Pearl is like much softer, is really the, the, the most eloquent way I can put it. It's like a much softer expression of the flavor, but the aromatic finish lasts a little bit longer, you know? You take a sip and there's like this soft kind of floral jasmine breeze that sits on your breath for a nice long time. Whereas this one is a little bit more kind of uh, direct and forward and not shy about its character as a green tea. Um, now, the last note that I want to make about the jasmine teas is that because it's a green tea, make sure you never use boiling water to make it. Uh, if you have a thermometer and you have specific control, you want to be using about 185 degrees. If you don't have a thermometer and you only have access to boiling water, then you can either use boiling water and let the cup rest for like a few, maybe five, 10 minutes before you add your tea, or you can add a little bit of cool water to your boiling water maybe like one quarter cool water and the rest boiling water and that'll give you a good uh, that'll cool the boiling water off enough that you're not gonna get one of those aggressive uh, over extractions um, and lastly green tea always has a time release on the caffeine so you should know whenever you drink green tea it's gonna take about two hours before that caffeine is really released into your blood system so we like to recommend them while the Sun is still out get your green tea and two hours later you'll still be rocking and rolling and having fun uh, thank you so much. Cheers.